Okay, we're, we're live. So I was asked a great, a great question about how do I sort of see therapy? And um, ther therapy for me is very much, most therapy, I'm going to talk in generalities, most therapy for me is um, atheistic. Um, meaning that it's talking about uh, dealing with the ego and giving it, you know, often it'll be like giving the ego good mechanisms to let go, to cope with life, to deal with life, to see life differently. Um, but it will never, t it usually doesn't say surrender your ego uh, and connect to a higher power. Uh, that usually doesn't enter into most types of therapy. So it's very much like... Um, and it's keeping the ego very strongly intact, but it's giving it a lot of mechanisms to get a healthy ego, as opposed to the ego being acting out in gross dysfunction, you know, letting go, um, seeing things differently, stopping bad behaviours. But it doesn't touch, most therapy doesn't touch, surrender your ego and, and connect to something greater, something more spiritual. So most of that ego, so for me, um, if, um, for most people who haven't got severe problems like addiction, um, <clears throat> if you go for therapy, that will often be very helpful if you've got like a mild problem and you need some rearrangement. Um, uh, therapy, therapy will be very useful for helping most people. Um, I think um, I go to 12-step groups for, for addiction and uh, the big book, uh, which is one of the texts they use in those organizations, um, says that if, you're, if you have an extremely inflated ego or, or you, become, you go to the depths of addiction, which is having a very severe spiritual deficit, for me, therapy, you're beyond the help of therapy. Therapy is not powerful enough to stop someone, you know, like stopping an insane alcoholic or an insane coca cocaine addict who's trying to kill themselves, you go to, you know, get, get a usual therapist will not be able to do the job. They haven't got enough intrinsic power in them. And it's very much instrumental in the, in the origins of the 12 steps where, um, if I may, um, um, there, was a, there was an industrialist, his name was Roland Hazard, in around 1930s America. And he was an alcoholic industrialist with a lot of money. And it was like alcoholism then was, uh, you know, you die. If you had alcoholism, you die. There wasn't anything that could stop you. But he had all the money, so he would avail himself of the best therapists in the world to stop his alcoholism, to, so he didn't, wouldn't have to die. Um, as I understand it, Freud was unavailable, but Carl Jung was available. And he, he had therapy with Carl Jung for his alcoholism, but... Uh, Carl Jung wasn't able to stop his, you know, he was one of the best um, therapists at the time, wasn't able to stop alcoholism. So not enough power in the best therapists on the planet to stop alcoholism. But he said he'd heard of these groups called the Oxford groups and he'd heard in history people had spiritual awakenings, even though they had these deathly grave illnesses and had rec recovered through having their spiritual experience. So he recommended that was the birth of the 12-step group. So in terms of therapy, if you've got a severe problem, disconnection or addiction, therapy is not enough. It might be able to help a normal person, but then you need God. You need this connection to a power. And therapy doesn't give you... Usually, most forms of therapy are not helping you connect to the higher power, to God, to a power that is even stronger than that which therapy can do. Because therapy, you're not... You're not letting go of the ego enough to get a connection to God. You're just rearranging the ego and helping the ego a lot. But it's not gonna it's not gonna give you something where only God can help. Because if God's the orchestrator of the whole universe, you know, therapy can only go so far, but with certain afflictions you need God that, that much power. So I think therapy helps a lot of people. I think it's a good thing, but if you've got certain types of illnesses um, which are grave, where only God can help, it will not be enough for certain, especially like if you've gone into addiction, therapy, if Carl Jung can't do it, my view anyways, most therapists can't do it. You need to, to surrender the ego. You have to surrender the whole basis of what the ego is, not to rearrange it or make a stronger ego trying to solve the problem. You have to let go of the foundations of the ego to connect to a light and a power 
which can which can get very dark afflictions off you. So that then we get so that that's therapy which is helpful to a lot of people but not strong enough for very severe addictions. Then you've got general spiritual groups. That's the next stage of help, like churches, Buddhist places, uh, twelve-step groups. Most of these are the next level up from therapy, and are more powerful than therapy, and can go beyond therapy. However, m a lot of these groups, like the average church, the average twelve-step group, are what I call dualistic surrender. So, uh, meaning that there's a me praying to God. There's, you know, and now you're getting divine help. But a lot of these groups won't, they're not non-dualistic in, in essence, in the sense that they will always, it will always be, you pray to God to get God's help, you meditate to get God's help, but then you start living your life as an individual. So these are, my, for me, in my view, they're more powerful than uh, therapy as a whole. I'm talking generalities, there are exceptions, more, more powerful than therapy as a whole. So they will take you up to the next level. Uh, then, for me, I'd say the next stage up from the general spiritual groups, like 12 Steps or churches, where you, you don't get to the foundations, where you are rec pulling in the power of a, of a higher power or God or the infinite light, but you're still remaining as an individual. Um, the next, I, I'd say there's a very important line I'd like to say uh, from my own experience, which is the Course in Miracles. Like, um, I go to 12-step groups and, you know, I, have a, I, have a, I had a, a food disorder and they helped with that. I've been many years recovered. But in terms of, like, physical illnesses leaving, something like the Course in Miracles, for me, is going to the non-dual level. Like, just because, you, you know, like... God did not create cancer, so it's not real. Like I did, God did not create gout, so it's not real. My gout left. So now we're, we're, we're speaking at the level of the non-dual, like this is all an illusion. If you, if you release fully 100% your belief in the illusion, those afflictions that you are suffering from within the illusion dis disappear. And that has been my experience. So you're now letting go of the foundations of the ego or dualistic relating to life, which is some of my favorite lessons. All my thoughts are meaningless. I'm not a body, I am free, for I am as God created me. There are many other lessons in The Course in Miracles, but for me now we're starting to get to the level of disappearance of the, of the ego. And then you have the non-dual teachers, Eckhart Tolle, um, uh, Ramana Maharishi, Muji, all, yeah, Ramesh Balsakar, but you were starting to get to experiencing, uh, letting go of full identification with the ego to experience the states of enlightenment, illumination, non-duality, uh, no separation or oneness. Those for me have the, the highest levels of power. W which do you use and when do you use them? Well, it depends, you know. Sometimes the most appropriate thing is what's appropriate for you where you are on your spiritual journey. For some people, maybe therapy will be the most appropriate thing. If you're an addict, um, uh, a 12-step group maybe. If, you got, um, if you're attracted to enlightenment, it could be A Course in Miracles. If you're um, wanting to go all the way to enlight enlightenment, you could be sitting at the feet of an, an enlightened teacher. So I, th I think therapy is helpful. What do I think of therapy? I think it's very helpful. Would I ever go to a therapist having done spiritual work for many, many years, no, I'd never go to a therapist. Um, uh, because for me, once you reach a certain level, you don't need the lower level. You know, if I was like a, a had no God, I was totally crazy, probably a therapist would be appropriate for me. But once you go beyond the level of therapy and you're connecting to God and spiritual realms and that power, there's no need for therapy any longer because you're, you've superseded what therapy can do for you. If you if you supersede what a twelve-step group or a church can do, then you know you, one doesn't need to go there. But one, I think there's usefulness in being attracted to the next, at least the next level up that you're going to. So if you're beyond a twelve-step group, then maybe an enlightened teacher would be the thing I'd be gravitating to. But not you know like if you've got someone who's just 
mentally insane, probably a therapist might be the most uh, useful person possibly to relate to.